Good to see you again, Steve here. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, this is episode 3 in the Steal This Idea series that I've been putting together. And as you saw in the intro there, uh, this is a Terry Mellis idea that I threw together. Just want to add a little disclaimer before uh, I start that, um, you know, this is all my own research and my own knowledge that I've put together uh, to create this Terra Mellis inspired idea. So there's bound to be little things wrong or things that you don't agree with. So um, you can just um, add the knowledge that you want to in the comments and we can have a little discussion about it too. I'm um, always up for that, so that's great. So just to recap what this series is about, I took I look at a particular band and I look at the ways they play and you know the techniques that they're using and how they're possibly writing songs and then I take that knowledge and I try and recreate um, a riff that would be inspired by that band basically and this is to give you as I said some insight into possibly how you can write such ideas. So for this episode we had the band Terra Melos and the idea itself is based on the Drugs to the Dear Youth era of Terra Melos. So I'm thinking from 2004 with the demo EP and then next we had the untitled album I think that was 2005 and after that I think they did the split with By the End of Tonight. If you've not checked out that split um, EP it's really good so check that one out. And then in 2007 they had Drugs to the Dear Youth where um, Jeff Worms left just before uh, they started recording that one. So I just want to say for the video, uh, the influences for this one, I'm just concentrating on Nick Reinhardt and I um, won't be concentrating on um, poor Jeff over here. So the idea itself is based mostly on the Drugs to the Do Dear Youth EP and that is the first song, um, I think that one's called um, Ambassadors of All That Is Good and that leads into the probably the most famous track, uh, 40 Rods to the Hog's Head. So what I did was made a condensed version of that first track and then I made, um, you can see there like the tapping riff that I have going there, that would be like you know, the start of 40 rods basically. So that's how I thought about this. But I also took influence from the records that I mentioned earlier also. So now the fun part, uh, the part that I like doing the most, is how did I go about writing um, that piece that you heard in the intro? So I spent um, a good week listening to those uh, four records that I mentioned. Yeah, I've listened to them to death anyway, but it's been a while since I listened to the demo EP and the, the split EP. And um, yeah, it was just it was really good fun uh, to kind of rediscover those as well. So I had a good listen to them, and I started to hear you know like the little nuances that um, you know Nick's playing, and then I watched a lot of uh, live videos too on YouTube, and then I started to piece some ideas together of how I could start to do things. So the biggest thing that I noticed is usually in their songs um, they have like this in each section there'll be like a main um, you know, like a main idea, like a main phrase, much like you're hearing jazz music, like the hook kind of thing. And then we have that hook and then we will have like little tangents coming off that hook. So Nick does this by adding in like you know short little unexpected runs or there's a, a sudden stop, you know, in the rhythmic change and also he does this by melodically changing uh, the piece but keeping the same rhythm or he can also sonically alter the sound as you know Nick has this in um, you know, a gigantic pedal board and I even think back on the earlier records too that he was using quite a lot of effects also so well not not too many but you know he still had a pretty big pedal board <laughs> I haven't got much in the way of um, modulation effects the reverb and um, um, a harmonizer pedal there, but we'll get to them later. So I'll just grab my guitar 
So what I mean by these three different things, so remember we have the rhythmic variation, melodic variation, and um, also tonal variation, so we'll concentrate on these three things. So the main idea for a phrase, so let's say for mine it was... So that was my main idea for the phrase for a particular section, and then I could start to think about how can I um, you know, start changing it up, right? So the first thing that I said was um, a rhythmic variation, so I had the repeated twice, and then I had the so I had two repeats of that instead, and then I had the little so then I had that little run in between there. And you may be saying to me, shouting at me in the moment, like how did I actually formulate these ideas? I will get to that later. Um, I'm just concentrating on more like the like nuances of uh, Nick's playing at the moment. On the uh, first four records, when it, when it comes around to the repeat again, I threw in the, another rhythmic change. <laughs> Um, so again, that's the kind of thing you hear quite a lot, I'd say, in, in, in their songs. Uh, so for me melodic-wise, the changing things, uh, I approach this writing this in the key of um, E major, but um, you don't have to stick within keys. And of course, this is something Terramellos do a lot. They kind of have this, like, um, you know, this chordal focus, like this one note focus, but there'll be all these kind of, like, uh, out-of-key notes um, to just try and, like, it kind of throw you off and add tension kind of thing. So get some really cool things going on with that. And then that's the exact same thing I did here. So C sharp in E major, but not C natural. Uh, so again, yeah, that changes things up a little bit. And later on, you also add the going through to the going to the B like that, so it jumps back into the key from C sharp to C natural. You hear that uh, quite a few times, I guess, um, if you've listened to a few of their records. And then the last one I said tonally is uh, messing around with uh, different effects. So you may have heard when I did the the second time, the first time, but the second time there was something different. And that's when I used um, this uh, TC Electronic Quintessence uh, harmonizing pedal here, and I made a tone print where I have the octave up on it. So that's how I sonically changed the sound there. It's a very uh, crude version um, compared to what you know Nick has, but I wanted to show you uh, something that he may do. You know, you can use all kinds of phases and uh, different kinds of um, modulation pedals if you want to really go for it. Go for it on that, that on that front. That's the uh, first half of the riffs. It's based on the more like uh, like I said, ambassadors of um, ambassadors of all that's good. Um, like I said, it's based on the first track of the uh, <coughs> Drugs to Do Youth EP, so it's a bit more like in you know, a crazy and erratic, and then it goes into the more of the uh, melodic side that you'll hear in a lot of Terramella songs, and I like in the theme are uh, 40 rods, I thought I'd do some tapping, so I had the... <laughs> that in a bit. First I want to talk about how I actually, as you said, you've probably been shouting at me, like say how do I even start to put my fingers on the fretboard and try and write something when, you know, Terra Mollis's uh, music is very, um, I, I'd say complex, uh, but it's going to be hard to try and craft something. So I did spend uh, quite a while trying to come up with something, and as I said back in the intro, like I listened to a lot of their songs seem to have this um, almost like modal jazz where you have this like one note focus or a particular mode focus. So let's say 40 bars. As this goes back to this uh, ringing E note, right? So I say like E is the focus there. So I thought I'd try and um, write something like that. So my idea at the e, uh, e major was going to be the focus in that way. Much like I said with modal jazz, with modal jazz basically you have like, let's say, a chord progression. But it's going to be based on one mode and that chord progression will repeat for a long time, giving the soloist a lot of freedom just to, you know, go to town basically. And this is how I see a lot of Terra Mella songs as well, we can do a uh, similar thing such as that. So I wrote this song in E major. And I wanted to focus on a particular part of the fretboard so I didn't get lost. So I, after noodling around, I decided that I'd go between the 5th fret and the 12th fret. So in E major, I worked out the major scale of shapes for this. And then... As you can see, uh, I've got that up 
up on screen for you. So basically, this is the Lydian and the Mixolydian modes of E major. But uh, don't worry about that. They're, they're just basically just E major scales because our focus is the E major itself. Okay. So now I have this uh, roadmap of notes is when I start to craft my ideas. So that run uh, wrote itself because I just I already know the notes were there, right? There's a simple melodic variation added in those off notes. And the same sounds outright adds tension because there's no D again in E major. Our, our ears are thinking this is you know E major basically. So when it hears that noise, like hang on a second, you know that sounds a bit out. That sounds cool. I like that. Okay. So and um, after that, uh, the second part of the idea. Um, again, I put the tapping in because it was on 40 rods, but it's also used a lot on those first four. Um, yeah, yeah, first four records. Sorry. Uh, I think like you know. Uh, you know, Melody 4 is a, is a really good one for tapping, it's a similar thing. And it's kind of more melodic, happy kind of parts, you know, I think like Flowers of the uh, demo EP as well. And um, I f approached tapping, like two hand tapping, a lot of uh, guitarists will think of it as, um, you know, bass and treble basically. So, your low notes here, um, your right hand here is going to be doing the, uh, the higher notes basically. And uh, I watched a video recently by Trevor Wong, if you've not watched it, and he does a really good video on approaching tapping in this way, thinking of, thinking of it as you know your bass part and then more of your lead part or you know bass and treble basically. So uh, check that video if you want some more tipping, uh, more tips on tapping. Tips on tapping. <laughs> okay. And um, again, for this, I have the, the roadmap of notes laid before me with the uh, the chart there. So that helped me find the notes. One of that ringing is really, I um, mean, you know, add some characteristics. If I had a bass, then I'd do that on the bass, I guess. Yeah, and then like. Uh, we have that like nice like you know section that brings it down so I've condensed it there and put it for you. And I just add that little run there, make just loads of little things like that to um, you know, you know, we come back to the start of the riff basically. Yeah, so I say that's how I pieced all that together. So uh, so let's recap quickly before we go. So we had um, writing having a, like a main focus idea and then changing that idea by adding like sudden changes. So these sudden changes can be rhythmic changes, melodic changes, or we can sonically change the sound. Uh, so that's going to be a tonal change. And then we need to think about the, um, you know, the m melodic changes. What I mean is that we're using notes that are not within the, uh, the this particular key that you're going for, or the sound that your ears are, are drawn to, right? So the notes that are out and sound a bit odd. Uh, that's used all the time. Sonically changing your sound, so if you're into your pedals, um, you can go to town there, uh, Nick uses quite a lot of pedals. And rhythmic changes, yeah, you're going to be using you know, a lot of our timing and stuff like this, you know, as you saw in the intro, that's in 5-4, you know, and it later on as a bar of like 9-8 or something like that. I didn't really write it like that uh, in mind, it just came out that way. Um, I guess when you start to add these... <laughs> It kind of like you know extends the bar maybe so that's how you branch into our timing that way and um, again then I went for the more just keeping it melodically nice so I'm not using notes that are out the key or sound quite odd uh, this is a way you can make it sound um, like that <coughs> reminiscent of um, a more melodic uh, melod melodically pleasing uh, Terra Mellis idea there so um, I don't think I can cover everything in uh, one lesson, right? There's quite a lot to do with their music, but I think I made a good start. So um, please leave any comments in the uh, comment section below, and we'll have a little chat about it. And um, feel free to take this idea away, of course, and start to craft it into your own song, or you know you can um, you know extend on all these ideas, or you can take them and you know move them around, change them into different keys. But I just wanted to give you some insight into how to start writing uh, a Terra Mellis inspired idea. As always, thank you for watching, and um, all the tabs will be over on my website. The link will be in the description, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.